hi there and welcome to code framer so from this video we will be starting to solve problems related to recursion so if you are not following this particular tutorial and you are watching this video for the first time then in the last few videos i have actually explained about recursion in detail and also i have explained about what are the different steps using which you can write a recursive function because writing a recursive function can be extremely fatal if you think about it because when a function calls itself it has a high footprint in the memory so if you do not write the function properly or if you have any bugs inside your recursive function then it could basically crash your application so it becomes extremely important for you to understand the concept first before starting to solve the problems related to recursion so if you have not seen the last three videos then i highly recommend you to, to go back and see those videos and understand the concept and then come back to solve these problems so having said that let us begin so in this video we are going to solve greatest common divisor problem so the first question is of course what is greatest common divisor or gcd and how basically you can find a greatest common divisor between two numbers so if you are given two numbers then we should be able to basically find the greatest common divisor of those two numbers. So first of all, what is a greatest common divisor? So a simple definition of GCD or greatest common divisor is that GCD is the largest positive integer that divides the number without a reminder, which means a greatest common divisor, say for example, between 15 and 30, right? So three can divide 15 and 30, right? So 15 divided by three is five and 30 divided by three is 10, right? But is that the greatest common divisor? No, because we have 5, which also divides 15 and 30. So 15 divided by 5 is basically 3 and 30 divided by 5 is 6. But is that the greatest common divisor? Again, no, because for 15 and 30, 15 should be the greatest common divisor because 15 divides 15 and also 15 divides 30. So 15 divided by 15 is 1 and 30 divided by 15 is 2, which means the greatest common divisor between 15 and 30 is 15. And let's take one more example. Say, for example, 8 and 12. What will be the greatest common divisor between 8 and 12? Is it 2? Because 8 can be divided by 2 and also 12 can be divided by 2. But that is not the greatest common divisor. The greatest common divisor has to be 4 because 8 divided by 4 is 2 and also 12 divided by 4 is 3. Right. So I hope that you are able to get what basically a greatest common divisor means between two numbers. So now having understood what basically a GCD is, now let us try to see what are the different methods using which we can find GCD between any two numbers. So the first method using which we can find a GCD between any two numbers is to basically find the prime factorization of that number. So we can break a particular number into its prime factorization. And after that, we can see what are the common factors between these two numbers. And using that, we can basically find the GCD. For example, prime factorization of a number, say for example, 40 looks like this. So you can divide 40 by 2 and then 20 by 2 and finally then 10 by 2. And in the end, we have the remainder as 5 and it can be only divided by 5. So the prime factorization of a number 40 will be 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 5 which is 2 to the power 3 multiplied by 5. So using this method of prime factorization, we can basically split a number into its prime factors. And after that, we can find the common factors between these two numbers. Now let us have a look at the example that we earlier discussed about 8 and 12. So how can we basically find the GCD between 8 and 12? So the prime factorization of number 8 will be 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. And the prime factorization of number 12 will be 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3. So as you can see here that we have 2 multiplied by 2 common between both 8 and 12, which means that 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. So 4 can be the GCD between 8 and 12. So this is one way of finding the GCD between the two numbers. The second method using which we can find the GCD between two numbers is known as Euclidean algorithm. So now let us try to understand this particular algorithm and see how basically we can find a GCD using this particular algorithm. So the Euclidean algorithm works with the simple principle that the GCD of any two numbers is divisible by the difference of those two numbers. I know that first when you hear it, it won't make much sense, but let me give you a quick example. So in our last example where we use the number 8 and 12 and we found the GCD of those two numbers. So if you noticed carefully, the GCD that we found was 4, right? Now when you subtract 12 by 8 or when you find the difference of these two numbers, which is 12 and 8. So 12 minus 8 is 4, right? So if you divide this difference 4 with the GCD of these two numbers 4, it gives you 1. 
which doesn't have any remainder which means that the gcd of the number 8 and 12 was divisible by the difference of these two numbers so using this particular principle euclidean algorithm basically works so now having understood the basic principle of this particular algorithm now let us try to use an example and see the different steps using which we can find the gcd of two numbers using the euclidean principle so say for example we want to find the gcd of numbers 48 and 18 so before starting to see the different steps using which we can basically find the gcd using the euclidean algorithm let us do a mental calculation first and see what could be the gcd of these two numbers so first what i could think of is 2 is divisible by both these numbers right so 18 divided by 2 is 9 and 48 divided by 2 is 24 but is that the gcd i don't think so let's use 3 right so 18 divided by 3 is 6 and 48 divided by 3 is is 16 but is that the gcd let's move forward and see let's use 6 this time so 18 divided by 6 is 3 and 48 divided by 6 is 8 i think this probably seems like the gcd for us now let us try with 9 18 will be divided by 9 but i don't think 40 48 can be divided by 9 without a remainder so 9 could not be the answer so i think 6 should be the gcd between these two numbers now let us see how basically we can come to this conclusion using the euclidean algorithm So when you are using Euclidean algorithm the first thing that you need to do is divide the numbers for which you are trying to find the GCD. So first if we divide 48 by 18 then it will give us the quotient of 2 and the remainder will be 12. So now listen carefully how you need to find the two numbers which you are going to divide in the step 2. So in step 2 you need to use the second number of your step 1 as the first number. Let me repeat. In step 2 you need to use the second number in your step 1 as the first number and the remainder that you got in the step 1 will be your second number in the step 2 so in step 1 the second number was 18 right we divided 48 with 18 so which means that the, our second number in the step 1 was 18 so this second number 18 will be used as the first number in step 2 and for the step 2 the second number will be the remainder which we found in the step 1 So the remainder that we found in the step 1 was 12. So that will be used as the second number in step 2. So in step 2 we got our two numbers which is 18 and 12. So now when you divide 18 with 12 the question that you will get is 1 and the remainder that you will get is 6. So now let us move on to step 3. So in step 3 also you will use the same principle. So the first number of step 3 will be the second number of your step 2. So the second number of your step 2 was 12, right? And the second number of your step 3 will be the remainder that you got in your step 2. So what was the remainder? It was 6. So in your step 3, the first number will become 12 and the second number will become 6. So when you divide 12 with 6, you get the quotient as 2 and the remainder will be 0. So the moment you reach the remainder as 0, so the second number of that particular step becomes your GCD. So the second number as you could see is 6 in step 3 right so that becomes our GCD. So this is the principle using which you can find the GCD using the Euclidean algorithm. I hope that it is quite simple right? So let me repeat once again how we came to this conclusion. So first when you want to find GCD between any two numbers simply divide those numbers right? So in this case we wanted to find the GCD between 48 and 18. So first we will divide 48 with 18. So the quotient will be 2 and the remainder will be 12. So in step 2 we will use the second number of our step 1 as first number and the remainder that we found in the step 1 as the second number in our step 2 so when we divide 18 with 12 it gives us the quotient as 1 and the remainder as 6 now in step 3 we will again use the second number of step 2 as the first number and the remainder of step 2 as the second number so if we divide 12 with 6 we get the quotient as 2 and the remainder as 0 and the moment we reach remainder 0 then the second number of that step will become the gcd of these two numbers so i hope that this concept is clear so now after having understood how we can find gcd of any two given numbers using this particular algorithm now it is time to think about a recursive solution to this problem so basically how we can find gcd of any two given numbers using recursion so in order to write our recursive function let us go back to what we understood in the last few videos so we need to follow the steps to write a recursive function so if you remember the first step was to find the recursive case so whenever you are trying to solve a problem using recursion the first thing that you need to think about is the recursive case so if you notice in this particular algorithm we clearly see a recursive pattern isn't it when we were in step 1 we had our first number and the second number which was 48 and 18 but when we went to step 2 the first number of step 2 was the second number of step 1 and the second number of step 2 was the remainder which we found in the step 1 and similarly in step 3 we repeated the same 
process of identifying the first number and the second number. So this clearly looks like a recursive case. So if you want to express this particular recursive case into an expression, then we can simply write GCD of any given number a and b will be equal to GCD of b comma a modulus b, which is nothing but the remainder of a and b. So this will be our recursive case. So this is how we find the recursive case when it comes to solving a problem. And also if you notice in this algorithm, we also have our base case. So whenever the remainder reaches zero, then in that case, we can return our value. So since now we have both the recursive case and the base case with us, let us move to the editor to write our recursive function. So since we want to find GCD of two numbers, which means that we will have to give two parameters or two variables as a parameter to our function. So we can write DEF GCD and we can say A and B. So A comma B. So A will be our first number and B will be our second number. So let us first write the recursive case. So if you remember from the expression that I showed you, GCD of A and B can be represented as GCD of B comma A modulus B. So we can simply write return GCD B comma A percentage B, which is nothing but A modulus B. So this will be our recursive case. So now let us move on to write our base case. So if you remember our base case was that whenever remainder is zero, then from there we can return the value of our remainder. So we can write if B equals zero, then return A. So since we have written our base case, we can move the recursive case into the else block. So whenever the base case is not met, or if it is not true, then recursive case will get executed. But if the base case is true, then our output value will be returned from the function. So if you are a little confused about the base case where we are returning the value A, then don't worry. Let us first execute this function and see whether our output is getting displayed or not or expected output is coming or not. Once that is out of the way, I will simply explain this entire functionality, how it is basically working in the background. So no worries about it. I will explain the recursive flow of this particular function in a short while. So let us first execute this function. So let me call this particular function with the same values that we used when I explained about the concept, which is 48 and 18. So if we write print GCD 48 comma 18, and now if we execute this particular function, then as you can see that the result is six, it means that our function is working properly and it is giving the desired result. So I hope that this is clear. Now the last step that we have to take care of is the step three of how to write a recursive function, right? If you remember, so the step three is to handle the edge cases because our recursive function will not be complete unless and until we handle all the edge cases. So now let us think about the edge cases. So I request you to pause the video here and think about the edge cases or different parameters that could break this particular function. So pause the video for a moment, think about it, and then you can see the solution. Okay, so I hope that you would have given it some thought. So there are two edge cases that we could think about in this particular solution. Number one is that all the parameters that we are passing as an input to this function should be in positive integers. And also if the user gives any negative numbers, then those negative numbers has to be converted into the positive numbers. Because in mathematics, if you remember GCD of even negative numbers is same as the positive numbers. So which means that if negative numbers or integers are passed into this function, then those numbers should be converted into positive integers. And then we can find the GCD of those numbers. So these are the edge cases that we need to handle in this particular function. So first, let us try to handle our first edge case, which is to ensure that the input parameters are positive integers. So in order to ensure that we can write if integer of a is not equal to a or integer of b is not equal to b, then we can simply return invalid input. So instead of getting a exception in your console, you will now get a message to the user that the input is not valid. So by this conditional statement, we have handled the first edge case, which is to ensure that the input parameter should be positive integers. Now the second edge case was that if negative integers are passed into this function, then those numbers should be converted into positive integers. So in order to ensure that we can write if input a is less than zero, then we can simply multiply that number with minus one because minus and minus is plus, right? So a is equal to minus one multiplied by a, which will basically convert it into a positive integer. And similarly, if b is less than zero, then b will be equal to minus one multiplied by b. So once we have written all these conditions to handle our edge cases, then I think this particular function is complete now. And you can confidently execute this and it won't break for any kind of wrong input as well. So now if you execute this particular function, then as you can see that you are getting the same result. So if we pass 48 and minus 18 this time, so our B number is negative now. So if you execute this function, then as you can see that we are getting the same result. 
so i hope that now you are able to understand the importance of thinking about the edge cases when you are writing recursive function and also basically how you can handle those edge cases by writing different conditional statements and always remember that handling the edge cases is extremely important while writing the recursive function so i hope that this entire function is clear so now let us see how basically this function is getting executed in the background so first we pass the input parameter as 48 and 18 when these parameters are passed into this function then value of a will be 48 and value of b will be 18 So as you can see that the base condition will not be satisfied here because b should be equal to zero, but in this case b is equal to eighteen, which means that the else block will get executed where the GCD function will be recursively called, where the first number this time will be b, which means it will be eighteen, and the second number will be the remainder of a and b, which means forty-eight modulus eighteen. which will be 12 so the value of b will be 18 and value of a modulus b will be 12 so now again the gcd function will be called and this time the value of a will be 18 and the value of b will be 12 so again the base condition will get failed here because b should be equal to 0 but b is currently 12 so again the recursive case will be executing so this time again the recursive call will be made but this time the first number will be b which means 12 and the second number will be a modulus b which is nothing but 18 modulus 12 which is 6 so again the recursive call will be made this time and the value of a will be 12 and the value of b will be 6 so again the base condition will be failed here because the value of b should be 0 and currently the value of b is 6 so again a recursive call will be made where first number will be b which is nothing but 6 and the second number a modulus b will be 12 modulus 6 which is 0 So again the GCD function will be called where value of a will be 6 and value of b will be 0. This time the base condition will become true because value of b should be 0. So the moment value of b is 0 the value of a will be returned which means 6 will be returned as the output. So this is how in background this particular function is working. I know that it will be little confusing in the beginning if you are very new to recursion but if you give it a little more thought just take it very very slowly don't be in a hurry at all go through this function again and again and see that how in the background the inputs are flowing in each recursive call how the value of a and b are getting modified and how the base condition is being reached and once the base condition is reached then how the value is getting returned and finally this function is able to show us the output just give it a little more thought and in fact i would say that you could give a recursive thought into this recursive function so that it becomes completely clear in your subconscious mind that how a recursive function works and how basically the input parameters flow in each recursive call once this is clear believe me that in future it will be very very easier for you to understand extremely difficult topics like for example while solving dynamic programming related problems or divide and conquer related problems or say binary tree related concepts it will really help you in the future for now i hope that i have been able to explain to you about this gcd problem using recursive solution in the next video i'll come up with another problem in recursion but in the next video i would expect you to first give it a try try to solve the problem yourself and if you are not getting the answer then maybe you can see the solution but give it a try yourself once because even though you will struggle but trust me while struggling you will get certain ideas which will really help you to understand the concept in a deeper way i think programming is lot more about struggle within your mind in order to find the solution rather than the solution itself it's about the struggle so i would want you to struggle from the next video to find the answer yourself and then see the solution definitely see the solution because while learning i think it is important to see how basically other programmers are trying to solve a problem or how basically they are thinking to solve a problem so that is very important but at the same time you can always think through the solution once yourself and then maybe look at the solution that others are providing so having said that thank you very much for watching this video and if you like this video then hit that like button share it with other code lovers and subscribe to code framer for more videos and see you next time